If you have ever asked the question, how do computers work? And you're looking for somewhere to find the answer, then you're going to find the answer in this book. But how do it know? The Basic Principles of Computers for Everyone by J. Clark Scott. So let's go ahead today and we will review this book. So let's crack on and we will review but how do it know the basic principles of computers for everyone by J. Clark Scott. Now this really is an excellent book if you're just starting out and you know nothing about electrical engineering computers. I'm talking about if you spent your life studying law or medicine or some other completely uh, different subject and you want to get a start on computers and how they work or if you're just interested in any of this stuff and you want to start out this absolutely is the first book that you should buy. I can't state that enough. This is the first book you should buy. So here's the table of contents here. Hopefully you can see it. I'm not going to read it all out. You can always read this. Uh, pause the video and have a look for yourself. So the book's uh, 206 pages long. Now what I will do is I will actually read the first paragraph here. Now this is just to give you an idea of the writing style of the uh, the author. So the title of this book is the punchline of an old joke that goes like this. Joe is a very nice fellow but has always been a little slow. He goes into a store where a salesman is standing on a soapbox in front of a group of people. The salesman is pitching the miracle new invention, the thermos bottle. He is saying it keeps hot food hot and cold food cold. Joe thinks about this a minute, amazed by this new invention that is able to make a decision about which of two different things it is supposed to do depending on what kind of food you put in. He can't contain his curiosity. He's jumping up and down, waving his arm in the air, saying, but, 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 finally he blurts out his burning question, but how do it know? So this gives an idea of the writing style. It's very personable and it's very direct and it's fun and it just makes the book uh, very, very readable. So let's continue and we'll show you what's in the rest of the book. So as you see, it's very, very wordy. And before we even get into any circuit diagrams, it just has a nice little conversation with us. Just so we're all up to speed on what a computer is. And here we're talking about speed and what we really mean by how fast a computer can work. And then the idea of computer languages. And then before we've even started on any of it, we're talking about how we can define a single bit within a computer. And again, it's purely uh, wordy here. So the first 15 pages or so are very, very basic, but fun and very interesting to have a read. And it, we're on page 16 before we actually get a little diagram. Okay, so this is a little NAND gate and it shows you the truth table for a NAND gate. So we work through simple variations of the NAND gate in order to get other basic structures. And we move on to a little bit of sequential logic and how we can actually generate a single bit. And we've generated a single bit of memory here. And it's asking what can we do with a bit. And then we're heading on to looking at taking the single bit and producing eight bits. But look at the amount of writing there is in between it. And this writing isn't just superfluous. This writing is actually uh, an excellent uh, read along with the actual design that he covers within the book. So, and it's, it's easy simple reading. Uh, you're not going to be sitting there scratching your head thinking, well, what does that mean? It explains everything uh, extremely well. So we're now at a bite 
and we're looking at having a um, an enable section and we're generating what here we're generating a little register and that's the first register that we have generated and it goes through a little bit about more gate combinations and we've got a decoder here and now we're looking at um, the RAM so building up a 256 uh, byte RAM and a bit about number systems I'll quickly flick through this here and the basic structure of the computer of the CPU a little bit more about gates here and uh, different types of structures for example left and right shifters and the uh, the notter and 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 or the exclusive or now we're looking at a, a half adder and, and full adder and you can see here it's built in the full adder and we've got an 8-bit full adder now a comparator as well so these are the basic structure we require for an arithmetic logic unit and you can see here it's going to actually build up the arithmetic logic unit and this is a little unit here now don't look at this and think that these are just um, random uh, diagrams and they sort of give an indication of how we can build it these are actual elements that if you go ahead in a computer simulation tool you can actually get in and build it and it will work and we can see here that again we're building up this basic structure of the CPU we look at the clock and how a clock might work and you can see I've actually done some stuff here myself on this section to generate a clock um, within the uh, tool that I was using to simulate this uh, particular CPU and then we're looking at the basics of the control unit so we're looking at how we can generate a counter or as he calls it a stepper so we go through a little count sequence and this is a section that really sells it for me and this is how we work out or understand the control unit and this really is the beating heart of our CPU and he goes through it uh, describing a hardwired control unit which is an excellent way to start um, and this section here was really really useful to me whenever I started out reading this, reading this book a few years ago so we have the stepper we have all the enables and all the controls that control the information that flows round about the CPU and we're looking at actually doing something with this control structure and it goes through the fetch execute cycle and it talks about how we could uh, go through a typical uh, computer program and it, it describes it in very very simplistic terms and it goes through this nice setup of a first second and third and great invention so I won't uh, give the show away I'll leave this to you for whenever you go and buy the book um, I do suggest you do it it's not an expensive book and it's well worth it um, so we go through the first second and third uh, great inventions and now we're looking at instructions and arithmetic instructions so it builds up its own after you've built your own hardwired control unit we build up our own instruction set one little stage at a time so we're looking at ALU instructions we're looking at load and store instructions and we've got the data instruction so the second great invention and we're looking at jump instructions and the third great invention and we're gradually building up um, an entire control unit one little step at a time and we've got the um, jump if commands here okay and we've got a clear flag instruction so that's the basic instructions and then it builds up an entire um, unit here the control unit so although that looks complicated it is all described within the previous pages and you can build this and it will work okay now we go ahead and we look at uh, a basic program so this is uh, a program to um, add two numbers together to multiply two numbers together 
So you're basically writing your own assembly code. And that assembly code has been generated from the control unit, which you have also built. And now we're looking at the top level and we can see it all coming together. And we're looking at how we can interface the information within our CPU to the outside world. And we're looking at the keyboard. So really up to this point here, you'll have built a nice function in CPU. So for the first, the book's worth it just for the first 150 pages. But not only do you get that, you get also a nice description of all, of the, all the other units within a functioning computer. So for example, the keyboard, the display, and looking at codes. There's nice sections of codes in here and in, on a, a disk drive. So all of the other uh, items within a typical CPU. Um, and that's the, basically, that's all folks, is like the end of the, uh, the main section of the book. But we're looking a little bit about hardware and software and the difference in the interface between them. Uh, programs, operating system, languages, uh, the file system, errors, uh, and uh, computer diseases, or, uh, and firmware and how, they, how they're booted, and also uh, uh, digital versus analog. And there is actually a nice little section, if I can find it at the end here. Um, and it talks about the uh, philosophy of the computer. So this little section here is worth a read. It's a nice interesting little section on uh, the philosophy of computers and what they can and can't do for us. So there's a few pages, well worth a read. And that really is the end of the book. And you've got a little index at the end. You almost hardly need the index because what you would tend to do is you would just work through the book cover to cover. And as I said, if you've got a software tool, for example, I used a software tool called Logisim, which is a freely available piece of software. And I built up the entire CPU that is in this book and I wrote the programs that are in this book and I got the entire thing up and running. So I cannot um, stress enough if you're just starting out and you're scratching your head thinking where do I start? This stuff looks really interesting. Uh, I would like to know a bit more about computers and how they work. Absolutely, 100%, this is where you have to start.